Hello, hello, namaste and peace and blessings. I would like to thank you so much for joining me in our prenatal study group. Today, we are going to discuss postnatal postpartum yoga. And we're gonna just simply go over a couple of ideas and thoughts that we can consider when we have postpartum or maybe even prenatal clients. And before we get started here today, we're gonna take a couple of minutes to relax and unwind our bodies. By finding ourselves in a comfortable seated pose, any easy seat that feels good for you, I am going to start out in a half lotus. May you find any seat that feels good for you as we are using this easy seat to help ground and soothe and center our bodies here today. Ensuring that our spinal cords are nice and elongated here, meaning our backs are not sunken down. We have control of our bodies. Our shoulders are melted downward away from our ears. As we take a nice breath in, exhale. As we breathe our palms at heart center, coming into a seated prayer. And maybe we can hang out here in silent meditation for four natural breaths. Breathe in deeply, exhale fully. As we are noticing how our bodies are starting to relax and soothe, we are going inward, taking this time to give ourselves a little self-care here today. As we breathe our palms above our heads, coming into a seated salute, fingertips reaches up towards the heavens, filling this stretch. Heart chakras open, chin is slightly up, palms are in the air, fingertips are towards the heavens, allowing our head to relax back between our shoulder blades. Maybe we can interlace our palms together with our pointer finger pointing up towards the heavens, feeling this slight back bend here. Three breaths. Two breaths. Exhale to center. As we separate our palms here, we're gonna come into a seated extended mountain. With our palms separated, we are channeling in positivity, hope and inspiration. As we twist our bodies towards the right, lowering our palms downward towards the earth, as we gaze over our right shoulder, we are in our seated twist. Three breaths. Two more breaths. Exhale the body back to center, coming into that seated star. Chin is up, breathe in. Twisting our body towards the left, palms come downward towards the earth, gazing over that left shoulder, seated towards opposite side. Two more breaths. Exhale and back to center, bringing our palms out to the side. We are in our star. As we breathe our palms together, flow into our salute. Breathe in, exhale the prayer. Breathing our palms down that heart center, gazing our eyes down with our eyes closed. Two breaths. As we relax our palms downward on our left seat and we bring our attention to each other, to the computer screen, we're gonna get our session started here today. And what we just did was a nice warm up session. A lot of times when I start any type of session that I'm going to be doing, uh, prenatal, postnatal, yoga, flow, health and wellness, any type of session, I always like to just use a grounding, soothing, relaxing yoga flow or meditation flow to help center and soothe and bring inward the client. It's simply helping them relax the day away and allow us to focus more on the present moment. And once we get settled in, it allows us to have a more restful, a more inward session. And our session here today is gonna be about postnatal postpartum yoga. And um, we're just gonna talk about a couple of things that we can do if, not if, but when we have our postnatal prenatal clients. And um, we're just gonna start out asking a couple of questions, like for example, can I start yoga after a normal delivery? So you may have clients come to you and they say, can I start yoga? How soon can I start yoga? And yes, many people have a doctor, they have a midwife and they can ask these questions to their doctors and their midwives. 
And even if they do, in many cases they have, they may ask us the same question, when can I start prenatal yoga? So if you have a client who asks, who asks you, when can I start prenatal yoga? What might you think you may say to that client? Right. Of and course, to each their own. Um, but first and foremost, we want to make sure that they definitely have a note from their doctor. And as their yoga instructor, um, we would like to know if they had a vaginal birth or if they had a C-section. Because, of course, if they had a C-section, we're going to be very, very um, aware and mindful of the poses that we put them into too soon. We're not going to allow them to do any poses that's going to allow a lot of pressure on to the tummy or any pressure onto the tummy. As we know, C-sections is a major surgery, abdominal surgery. So we have to be very mindful. If the patient, if the client had a vaginal birth, yes, um, it's gonna be a little bit more different. But in either case, C-section or vaginal birth, we wanna make sure that they spoke with their doctor. And in many cases, if you feel that's needed, ask for a doctor's note, or maybe get something in writing via text or email stating that the doctor did give them the okay to start prenatal or postnatal yoga classes. And um, once they do, we're just gonna simply just get them started, nice and easy. But technically a person can start doing yoga immediately after having a baby. And I don't mean getting on the floor and doing poses. They can do yoga, meaning just sitting here in an easy, sitting here in a bound position, laying on their backs in a Shavasana. Because let's keep in mind, Prenatal yoga, we can't lay our clients on their backs after a certain month because their tummy is too big. So we just went over three poses, just like that, that we can relax and help a client soothe in doing yoga. So yes, yoga is about the movement and yoga is about um, strengthening the body, strengthening the body. But at the same time, when a person just have a baby, it's not just about strengthening the body. It's about going inward, relaxing and just focusing on self keeping our alignment long, as opposed to sunken down, we're reminding clients to keep their back up. These are yoga. This is yoga things that we can do with a client. So we can start yoga right away, even if we're just sitting there working with their breath. We're doing pranayama and helping them with their breathing techniques. If they have taken, um, if they have taken prenatal classes with us, they're probably already aware of the breath. Um, however, if this is their first postnatal and they never did a prenatal, we want to work with the breath, get them to be more mindful of breathing, allowing the natural deep breathing, exhaling to come more fluently for them. These are all yoga techniques that we can do with the person right away. But yes, when it comes to intense poses, for example, if we're putting the client in a boat pose. In a boat pose, we are working our core. So we don't want to put a person in a boat pose when they just had a baby, either vaginal or C-section, because we're, we're doing too much here with our core. So we just want to be mindful of what we can and what we cannot do with our client. But if we have a client and they're ready to start yoga and they're and they're ready to go inward and relax and soothe, we can help them. We don't have to turn them away. We're just going to do nice, easy poses with them. Uh, but in general, most women are encouraged to start yoga six weeks after they have a baby, six weeks. Um, of course, it's kind of similar to an exercise program. They say, doctor says, don't start working out. Don't hit the gym until six weeks. Of course, we know when we're working out, that's a little bit more intense workout. You know, our bodies, our heart rate's flowing. So in many cases, working out six weeks is definitely a must. But in yoga, a lot of times in yoga, we're relaxing, we're going inward, we're, we're working on our alignment. We could be sitting here with our palms at our heart center, breathing in and breathing out, keeping our back straight, and we are doing yoga. We can be relaxing in a staff pose, legs parallel, straight in front of us, side by side maybe bringing our palms at center and slightly hinging at the hips. And we are doing yoga. We are stretching and soothing, reaching our palms downward towards our feet or our ankles, allowing our head to relax down. We are doing yoga. So we can start yoga before six weeks, but we can't do intense poses in yoga. And as yoga instructors, I'm pretty sure we already know what poses are intense and what poses are not intense. So we're not gonna go over what poses are super intense. We know what poses that works our core and what poses do not. We're just keeping all of that in mind. And again, every every client's going to be different. Everyone's just going to be completely interpersonal plan. What plan I may have for you, I may not have for another. Now, of course, if we are teaching a group prenatal or a group postnatal class, we're just going to have to be mindful and do a lot of modifications in that class. Um, being aware of who 
um, had a vaginal birth, being aware of who had a C-section birth. And when we are cueing our students during these classes that is prenatal or postnatal, we have to do modifications. Basically, we are being aware, we are being mindful of our students, and we are just giving them a whole lot more options. So if we're doing a pose where it's going to cause us to work our core more and engage our core muscles, we're going to say, however, if you just had a baby, you just had a C-section, maybe you can flow into a child's pose or a puppy pose or flow onto your side coming into a fetus pose. We're going to give them options to do other things. Um, so yes, we can we, we can teach a postnatal class. We can teach a prenatal class. We can have moms who are just found and out there pregnant, who are five months and who are ready to give birth. Of course, those different trimesters of pregnancy all require different type of yoga skills and techniques. We're not gonna put someone in specific poses when they're above five months when they have big bellies, but sometimes when they're just finding out, there may be poses that they can still do. So again, we will do a lot of cueing. Um, we will do a lot of modifications when it comes to those type of classes. So please keeping that in mind, just modifications is essential. As long as we know modifications, as long as we are aware of the client, and as long as we are aware of the poses and what parts of the bodies the poses work, we are able to continue our prenatal and our postnatal sessions with our clients without causing any injuries to our client. Of course, knowledge is the key and being aware of what body parts are being worked when we are doing poses and when we are putting our clients in poses is essential. So awareness and being knowledgeable is a beautiful thing. And I'm pretty sure all of you guys are knowledgeable and aware. So we're going to be good to go. All right. Just keeping in mind that every woman heals differently. So how my body may heal, your body may not heal. Um, how her body may heal, this person's body may not. So if a person did have a C-section, you may see in some cases, some people heal slower than others. So it's always going to be mindful. We're always going to be mindful of how a person looks when they come into our class. Okay, so let's just say we're teaching a prenatal or a postnatal class, or let's just say it's a one-on-one. -on -one. Let's, let's make it easy. It's a one-on-one. -on -one. They're coming to you for one-on-one -on -one for their prenatal or postnatal. But during this session, you you realize that, or maybe they say, oh, I'm, I'm happy to have this class today. I feel a little pain today. Or I felt a little dizzy when I got up. I just don't feel like myself. So if we have a client, a patient, a client, if we have a client and they say that they feel dizzy, they have a little pain today, but, they, but they're ready to do yoga and they want to do yoga. We may think, oh, this person's in pain. This person's feeling dizzy. I'm not going to do yoga with them today. But they want to. We can still do a yoga class with that client if they want to do yoga for that day. Their body's in pain. They, they feel dizzy. They don't feel themselves. Sometimes yoga is exactly what they need to soothe, relax, and go inward. So if they want to do it, who are we to say that? We will not do it with them. However, because they just told us that they were dizzy, we are not going to put them. We're not going to put them in, in any, any inversions. We're not going to have them with their head down to the earth, um, where they can get dizzy or fall over. We're not going to put them in any yoga poses where it's causing them to work their core or use a whole lot of strength. We're going to make this a nice, gentle, easy, subtle yoga class. Maybe we'll stay close to the earth. Maybe we'll only come up to Tadasana, and that's it. Because sometimes putting a person in that extended mountain, they can cause, it sometimes causes balance issues. So just coming up in that standing to Dawson may be the most that will come up. But we can still do that class with that client. We're going to make this class nice, relaxing, and soothing class. And if they fall asleep during that class, that, that would be a beautiful thing. Sometimes when you put them in Shavasana and we um, relax their minds, relax their bodies, sometimes they fall asleep. When people do on postnatal, prenatal classes, sometimes sleep is exactly what the body needs. So what we was able to do was do nice, gentle yoga flow with them, allow their mind and their body to relax and soothe. And as we put them in Shavasana, they may gently fall off into dreamland. And that is a beautiful thing because what we are doing is we are, we are teaching them how to do these poses at home, at the comfort of their home, to not need us to do classes. Of course, we want them to come to us but we also want them to be able to do these yoga poses several times a week, you know, not just once a week or whenever they come see us. You know, most of our clients buy our classes by packages. Mm -hmm. We often don't sell $30 a month for unlimited yoga. Often, many classes, you guys will do your, your business plan differently. But the classes that I've taken, it'd be like eight classes for $60 a month or something like that. Just throwing numbers out there. So many people won't take a yoga class every day unless it's in their gym and it's free. They'll take yoga classes 
once a week or every other week because they bought class packages, you know, certain amount of classes for a certain price. And what we are doing is we are teaching them how to go in when they're home. We are giving them value. We are giving them inner power to learn how to self-soothe themselves. And then they will continue to come back to learn new self ways, to learn new techniques to self-soothe themselves. And they may even bring their friends. Because again, if we can teach people to go inward, to relax and soothe postnatal or prenatal, it is a beautiful thing. Sometimes they suffer from that um, postpartum depression. You hear that a lot. But teaching them how to go inward, relax, soothe and unwind is a beautiful thing and it helps with that depression. So these are just a couple of things that we can do with our prenatal, postnatal clients. And again, we as yoga instructors will come up with our own techniques, our own ways, our own styles. We can charge whatever we feel fit you know, to each their own. There is no wrong way to do your individual business plan. You go with whatever feels best for you and make up a class plan that feels best for you. But when I teach my yoga, I, I teach to not just, you know, instruct them on what to do for that day. I am... Um, hoping that I am teaching them and showing them ways to relax and soothe and go inward at home. If they don't have money this week, if they're having a bad week, they lost their job, whatever the reason may be, or they're on vacation, they can't find a yoga class and they need to go inward. It is a beautiful thing when I love, when I can say that I taught someone how to self-soothe. And they say, because of you, I was able to relax and because I learned some techniques. For me, that's what yoga is all about. But we will all have our own ways and own reasons as to why we teach yoga and what it does for us and what we plan on getting out of this. Yes, we are getting a pay out of this. But in many cases, you know, as yoga instructors, many of us are empathic and we just like to help people help themselves. It's about making money and, and having a career because in life we have to make money and live. But at the same time, and most importantly, helping someone find their way and find the ways to go inward and do things themselves is it's worth more than money, you know? But these are things money can't buy. Big. You know, you guys have probably heard of abdominal wall separation. So we spoke about vaginal birth, we spoke about C-section birth, but then there's also complications from having any type of baby um, with that extra weight, the heaviness of the on the abdominal wall can cause that ab- abdominal wall separation. So if we have a client who has abdominal wall separation, we definitely want them to have the doctor's note when they're when they're starting their postnatal yoga classes, just giving them the okay. And even when they do, we're going to be very mindful of the poses we do with them. And maybe we'll be doing more of a reiki, reiki type yoga sessions, you know, when we're helping them go inward, relax, soothe, and heal their bodies, you know. People, many people often don't realize the power, the intrinsic power that we have within ourselves to heal our body. And I'm going to say that again. Many people do not realize the intrinsic power that we have within ourselves to heal our body. That Reiki healing, that Reiki healing, Reiki, Reiki, tomato, tomato, roof, roof, whatever you want to call it, that healing, that healing, healing hands comes from within. And as Reiki practitioners, um, we're sparking your healing powers. We're not healing you. We're just awakening the power within you to heal yourself because you heal yourself. Is Reiki healing is almost identical to the placebo effect. The doctors give patients a water pill, a water saline solution injection, and they're thinking that they're getting a medicine. And in all reality, they're getting nothing but a water pill. But they believe and they feel that they're getting better. And in return, their body starts to heal because their power that we bring in just by believing in healing generates throughout our bodies. Our cells start to respond to what we feel and what we believe. You know, they say, watch the words you speak. Watch what you say to yourself because your body hears it. That is true. And when we feel sick or whatever, and we start to believe that we are receiving a drug and we start to feel happy about it, and energetic about it, the cells within our bodies fill it and they start to heal. That is what Reiki healing is. It is you feeling, believing, and knowing that you are healing the power of attraction and you start to heal your cells within. So as Reiki practitioners, what we are doing is we are helping you start, we are sparking your spark to heal yourself. We are just giving you that push. We are awakening the fire within you. We are lighting that flame to help you heal yourself. And if you have a patient who had abdominal wall separation, we can help them heal themselves by doing yoga, but nice and easy, simple yoga, going in with laying on our backs, laying in our fetal poles, what laying in um, a puppy pose, 
child's pose, whatever feels good for your client, maybe all of those poses and we're helping them go inward, relax, soothe, noticing how you feel. We are allowing them to awaken their healing powers, their healing energies to heal that abdominal wall separation, to help bring their body back to optimum response sooner than later. Of course, once again, everybody's, everybody body is different. So sometimes no matter how hard you help, try to help, the healing time will be long. Whereas though some may have a shortened healing time. In many cases, it's because of, it could, it could be because, in many cases, it could be because of the diet and what they eat. Of course, that plays a role in how we heal as well. The foods we eat literally, literally, literally plays a role in our cells within our bodies, regenerating ourselves. The foods we eat literally play a role in our bodies becoming sick. The, the free radicals, the oxidation, the free radicals, the oxidation all comes from the food we eat. And we know free radicals and oxidation is what tears ourselves apart and helps our cells divide and develop those cancer cells. That's why it is very important to eat antioxidants, antioxidants. People say, what is antioxidants? It fights against oxidation. Oxidation comes from food. The food oxidizes in our body. That's where antioxidants come in and it helps engulf and eat up those particles within our bodies that are no longer, that are not good for us. Not no longer, that are not good for us. Oxidation free radicals are not good for our bodies. And that's where those antioxidants come into play. Getting the antioxidants from the fruits and from the vegetables that we eat. So yes, the food we eat also helps our bodies heal. So we're eating healthy, food is medicine. Fruits and vegetables, that's the real pharmacy and not pharmaceuticals, I mean F-A-R pharmaceuticals. That's the pharmaceuticals that's gonna heal us within. And as yoga instructors, especially when we have someone who's going through a postnatal class, even prenatal class, they may ask us what to eat. And many of us may, may not be um, nutritionists, but maybe many of us did study holistic health or um, Ayurveda services. So we know something about eating and what foods to do to our body. And we can guide them, ensuring that we are not operating outside of our scope of practice, but we can guide them on basic fruits and vegetables and how it works. We can guide them on oxidation and free radicals and antioxidants. These are simple steps that we can do operating within our scope of practice and we are helping our clients during prenatal and postnatal times of their lives. So these are just a couple of ideas and a couple of thoughts that we can have and take with us. And um, um, so I guess the main thing we could take out of this class today is be mindful of the patients, the clients we have in our class. Be mindful of the clients we have in the class. Be mindful of how we are as an instructor and um, how we see our clients and just make sure that when we are taking these new patients when they're pregnant and um, or just had a baby that they have that doctor's note. And if they didn't produce a doctor's note, um, we want them to put it in writing because now we have in writing that they gave us the okay from their doctor to take yoga classes. So we just want to always do our part and protect our part. And at the same time, do our part to assist people in finding healthy, happy pregnancies, um, postnatal. Some people call it the fourth trimester, you know, is which is postnatal, you know, um, the fourth trimester is new to me. Um, I didn't really hear people say that, but I hear it very often now. So I guess that's a new thing. I'm used to one to three trimesters, one first trimester, second trimester, third trimester. Now giving birth to a baby is considered fourth trimester. Hey, whatever works. And that's what we come in at to just help them find a nice, easy process, no matter what trimester they're in. One, two, three, and now four. Peace and blessings be to you all. I thank you so much for joining me here today in our prenatal study group. I hope you have a great evening. Peace and blessings be to you. Namaste. So sometimes our classes, our classes normally last 45 minutes, but again, if we don't have a lot of class engagements, once I go over the notes that I have planned for the day, we'll simply just relax, unwind, and call it a day. 